Good morning and welcome to the video. I hope you guys are well. Uh, today I'm at the beautiful Ramamere Heath, which is about 25 minutes away from my house. Uh, it's either in Hertfordshire, Bedfordshire or Buckinghamshire. I'm not sure. I can never quite uh, work out where I am these days, but it's, uh, it's not too far away. We're just outside a town called Heath and Reach. And I have to say that it's gorgeous this morning, uh, mainly because the heather's out. Um, and this time of year is just, it's just fantastic over here. Uh, the only thing we're missing this morning, and I did already record an intro, uh, and I sounded miserable as hell, so I don't want to sound miserable again, but the only thing we're missing is a bit of light. Um, it was forecast to be sort of sunny intervals today uh, between sunrise, which was about half an hour ago, uh, and 9 a.m. And unfortunately, so far, that hasn't happened. But I'm not going to let that deter me from trying to get a decent shot here. Uh, now, the, the, the heather is blooming it's absolutely gorgeous um, we've got plenty of nice trees to work with um, so I don't see why we can't get a nice shot I have to say if there'd have been a bit of mist it would have been absolutely fantastic but there's not so we work with what we've got so let's have a look and see what we can find today <music> Okay, so I've got my first uh, composition here and let me try and talk you through what I'm seeing on the screen and my thought process behind it. Basically, the sky is flat grey. So I am trying not to include the sky, if I can, in any of the images that I'm going to take. That's the plan. So when the sky is flat grey, that also means there's no light at all which means I've got no contrast, I've got no light and dark, I've got nothing really to work with. So the only things I can work with really are shapes, objects, and slight difference in tone <coughs> and lines. So what I've got here is I've got basically the images split for me into three. Although on the screen, on the camera screen, it kind of looks like it's split in in half almost it's actually split into three so we've got the header which is running off an angle down to the left hand side so it's running from sort of top third right or mid third right down to lower third left and then we've got this tree which is uh, I believe a birch and there's a little bit of greenery around the tree and what I'll do in post is I'll probably lighten up the tree or alternatively I'll lighten up the background at the moment on the image the tree and the background look very similar they're very similar shades they're very similar in color they're very similar in tone so there's not a lot of light and dark anywhere across this whole scene but you've got the pinks which obviously is going to make a big difference to the image and then hopefully you'll have this tree reasonably prominent and then dropping off into the background and like I said, there's nothing in the sky at all. So I've zoomed in basically just to take all of the sky out. And it's almost like a sort of just a, a shot of colours and, and patterns, really. There's not a lot else going on. So, yeah, so that's the first shot here. We'll see how it looks. I've literally wandered just a few yards down the track and I've come across another shot that I can take. Now I've got basically again killing out, cutting out all the sky, cutting out all of that. 
I've got some really nice foreground heather in the very, very near foreground. And then I've got this tree on the left hand side in the background. And basically what I'm doing is I'm shooting it in portrait mode uh, or portrait orientation, should I say. And that way I'm really emphasizing this heather in the foreground and, and actually the tree in the background. If I think if I shot it in landscape, you'd lose some of that depth. Now, there's a big area of sort of uh, nothing around the base of the tree. So what I've done is instead of shooting at eye level, I've come down to about waist level, which means that I'm basically cutting out all of the, the scrubby area. So you just can't see it and it's filled with the heather that's in the foreground. And there are some really nice ferns as well, some very lush green ferns. They're all looking the same way, if you like, and that adds a little bit of patination into the midground. So actually, again, quite a nice shot. Base of tree, bit of patination with some heather, uh, with some ferns, heather in the foreground. Should look really nice. And on a side note, I will say I'm starting to see little hints of blue in the sky. So you never know we might get a bit of light on the scene as well. Now, I don't know if you remember or not, but I did a video from here a few months ago and I didn't do anything actually on the heath at that point. I came straight into the wood, which is called the Kingswood, which is where I'm heading into now. And there was a particular um, shot that I took of a birch tree where I said this would look fantastic, I bet, in the, uh, in the summer when the heather's out. Now, all of this is heather. All this around is heather and imagine what this would look like. I know you're not going to get the colours of the autumn sort of leaves, but imagine the beautiful pink hues you get here in, this, in the late summer. Uh, bloody hell, that looks fantastic with the birch trees. Anyway, uh, so that's where I'm heading now to see if I can retrace my steps and find that particular shot and see whether indeed it does look good with the heather. So I'm still on the track of the elusive uh, heather birch composition that I found a few months ago, uh, but I've kind of got a bit sidetracked because I was sort of wandering up this way through the woods and I saw this beautiful uh, arrangement of birches uh, and there's these little tracks that are coming off the main track all the way through these uh, ferns. And I wandered up one of them and I just found what I think was a really lovely shot with a few birches involved. and. You know, and then you, you take that one and you look around and then all of a sudden the light was out, there was a little bit of sun and it was shining on one of these trees over here and I must go and get that. So headed over to that and unfortunately by the time I got there, the light had gone and there's no shot without the light. It's very dull uh, without the light. But um, I'm kind of in betwixt and between whether to wait now to see if the light comes back because that was a nice shot with the light, but it doesn't look like it's going to, it looks like it's really clouded over again. So I'll probably have a little look around uh, here because there are still a few shots to be had, I think, in this little area. And then I'll head off and try and find that heather again. You know, I could so easily just get lost in these woods. And I don't mean lost in terms of direction. I mean lost in terms of time and lost in terms of just myself and my mind, not losing my mind, but, you know, just being with myself and finding competitions. And, you know, I haven't really moved too much from, from where I was earlier. There's so much here. It's absolutely just, well, it's just a beautiful place to be. Um, I forgot actually how much I love woodland photography. It's really weird, you know, you just took it back, take it back two years. And, you know, I've always said I, I can probably count, well, it must be an, a, at least 10 times. I've said on videos, I'm not very really good at woodland photography. But as I've progressed, I think as lockdowns forced us, you know, in the, in the, over the past year to find more local places and to concentrate on things like this, woodland photography has fast become 
one of my absolute favorites i just i love it i just love the 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 just the the non-uniformity of it all it's just the and i used to hate greens as well which is really weird and now i love greens and i love finding the light and the dark even without the sun there are still light and dark areas you can find and there's still you know shapes and form and textures and patterns and all sorts of things in the woodland it's fantastic i just i recommend it to anyone i know it's difficult to start off with i know it's hard to find those compositions when you first start but the more you do it the easier it gets and the more you see them and then all of a sudden you just see them everywhere you just you just literally just wherever you look in the woodland i mean i'm looking now and i can you know you can just see them everywhere it's like oh there's another one there's another one there's another one and they're really fun they're really fun to take and they're really fun to find and they're also really fun to process so woodland photography just you know totally recommend it I'm, I'm, I'm totally waffling on here um, but I'm having such a good time this morning doing this and, and when I first got here I was like the light's not great and I'm here for the heather but you know the more you you come into places like this you really appreciate how beautiful they are how diverse and how many opportunities there are to get lovely photographs um what i wanted to say actually while i was here i wanted to talk a little bit about the polarizer uh, a lot of people look at a polarizer and they just think water glare cut the glare off the water take reflections off the shiny surfaces which which yes this is doing here but it does so much more when you're actually in the woodland it does take the reflections off but by taking those reflections off you're really enriching the colors so if i show you here on this camera uh, i'll just put it on to record um, you can see that if i just turn it all the way so it's not polarized how much that takes like desaturates the image and takes away those colors and then when i roll it back just it just brings back those colors just absolutely beautifully and they just look really fantastic and lush and i think a polarizer is an essential piece of kit um, if you're going to take uh, woodland images I, re I really really do So while I'm here, I just wanted to say a couple of other bits um, before we carry on. Uh, firstly, um, I want to say like genuinely a massive thank you to everyone who took the time to watch last week's video. Um, I want to say as well a huge thank you to those who liked it. Um, I mean, you know, it, it got 160, 170 odd likes, which I think is about one in three of the people who watched it gave it a like. Phenomenal genuinely phenomenal i don't i don't i don't care about the likes in terms of the algorithm or any of that rubbish but i do care about them because it means that you're enjoying what i'm doing and i want to say a big thanks as well even more so probably to the people who took the time to comment um you know i got i think i got over 60 70 comments which is one in 10 again so one out of 10 of you took the time to comment that's amazing absolutely amazing thank you so much for doing that and that's why i do this you know and and the people some of you guys said you know you don't realize what an inspiration you are and and all of the things like that and that means like, like genuinely that means everything to me because that's why i do this channel i do this channel for me of course i do you know i'd be stupid not to uh, but also i do it you know to, to hopefully inspire you guys and maybe a little bit of education i don't know and 
whatever but i don't do it you know i'm not trying to build a brand or start a business or run workshops or any of that i just i look genuinely just do it to inspire and to entertain if i can and maybe maybe educate a little bit so that when someone gives me a comment like that it literally means everything so i want to say like a huge huge thank you for that Well, I found the, uh, the location that I was looking for, but the heather is uh, nowhere near as vibrant as it is up on the heath. Uh, I don't know whether it's a later bloom or an earlier bloom, but it's certainly not in full bloom. And on top of that, I think that the tree, or well, certainly one of the trees that was in the image that I took has, has fallen, another one's gone. Um, and the, the actual tree that I think all the colour was on, I mean, I know there's not going to be any colour on it this time of year because we're in the middle of summer, but it's nowhere near as interesting without those yellow leaves. The, the, the trunk's very dark, the tree's very dark. I think, that, I think the leaves were what were making it stand out from the background in the past, or when I took the shot last time. And with the fallen tree in the background, uh, I think it's a, it's a bit of a, a no-go, this one, unfortunately. So. Um, I'm not going to take the shot uh, here today uh, and I think unfortunately unless the colours change in terms of autumn and you get the old autumnal colours on the trees I don't think the heather is going to be able to recover this shot anyway. I did have a little look at this tree here to see I've got one sort of behind me here I don't know if you can see it, and I did have a look to see if I could get that from the other side with the heather but again it just uh, it's just not quite enough the heather isn't really out it looks quite dead uh, and so, yeah, I'm not really going to take a shot, but, and also the light is totally gone now. There's no, there's no chance of any sun. Um, it's totally clouded over, which is fine. Uh, it's absolutely fine because I'm done now anyway. Um, I've had a really good morning. I have to say, uh, I, I wish there was, you know, a bit of mist earlier on or a bit of light uh, for that heather, but coming back into this woodland and I, could, I mean, even looking around here, I could still see shots all the time as I was walking up to find this place. But I've been here now for a good couple of hours, two or three hours. So I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna head home. I've got loads of nice shots. I'm gonna process those. Um, you will see them anyway. Um, but yeah, it's been an absolutely fantastic morning. I've had a really good time, and uh, yeah, it's just nice to be back out really. So that's all I've got to say. So thanks ever so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, and I'll see you next time.